Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm just reading the, yeah, the sound bites that were sent. It didn't print for an hour, and I did just not get them looking. At them. Hang on here just a second here, folks. Okay, greetings, and welcome back. Great to have you, Rush Limbaugh, 800-282-2882. If you want to be on the program, the email address, lrushbo at eibnet.us. What happened to the call from the woman who wanted me to explain what she thinks is being hypocritical? Where did she go? Did she just disappear? There was a woman on the, on the line. Um, she was the next caller up, and she knows who she is. And she blew it. She hung up. Maybe her battery ran out. Or maybe something else happened. But she was going to ask me, how in the world can you on one hand be talking about how the Democrats are imploding, as you have been, and then tell us today that they're winning all these local elections out there? How, how, how do you reconcile your statements? How do we know what you say is true? How do we believe what side of whatever your mouth something comes out, something like that? I don't, she wasn't being mean, right? She just wanted, what well, both can be true. The Democrats can literally be imploding and not know it and on, on a whole bunch of different levels and still winning these local elections. You know, local politics is, is arguably different. And because the closer you get to where people leave the, live, the issues change and, and things have a, uh, uh, much greater level of importance. Like, for example, a Trump dossier probably doesn't matter as much if you're voting on a, a, a project that involves local money and a new system to deal with people suffering in a county. Uh, and depending on how that issue plays out in a campaign, um, my point in all this is that the Democrats are winning these elections. They're being very quiet about it. They're local elections. Some of them are for the House of Representatives, but very few. Most of them are state races, and some of them even more local than that. But they're winning them, and George Soros is funding them. George Soros is working every day to undermine Republican opposition as well as promote liberal Democrat opposition, and particularly in, in elections involving judges, district attorney, the judicial system elections, that Democrats want to maintain their grip on that because that's in large measure insurance for when they lose elections. For example, Trump won the presidency and he issues these travel orders to ban terrorists and refugees coming in from various countries, seven countries. What happened? They had no trouble finding a bunch of communist judges out there to issue a stay on Trump's order, claiming it's unconstitutional, which means it has to be adjudicated. So they effectively get effectively get to shut down Trump's order. That's why they don't want to ever lose control of the judiciary. Of course, the higher you go, the more important you get. Supreme Court stacked with a bunch of liberals. It doesn't matter what Congress does. Every case of any importance eventually gets the Supreme Court. They'll rule the liberal way on it. It doesn't matter what the voters have said. The best example, that's abortion. The American people have never, ever weighed in in democratic fashion on abortion. In, U in the United Kingdom, they have. Have you ever wondered why? In the U.K., there are not knockdown, drag-out fights over abortion like there are here. I mean, it's a controversial issue, but there it is a settled issue. You know why? Because in the U.K., it was actually voted on. It, was not, it did not become law by virtue of one of their courts. Well, we've never had the actual democratic process play out when it comes to abortion or a number of other controversial issues like that. The Supreme Court decides them, and the people who lose end up looking at the rulings, and if they find a political bias, then it just prolongs the anger and the angst. This is what the Democrats seek. Now, at the same time, the Democrats are tone deaf. There's Mark, Mark Penn, who is the former Clinton pollster, now at Harvard, runs a polling unit, grab soundbite number three. Yeah, we've had we've had some nights of Chuck U. Schumer all week warning that he was in Chicago on Monday. He was warning Democrats they're missing the boat. If they're only going to run on Trump, Trump hatred, they cannot win on Trump hatred alone. Now, he doesn't say that very much because he doesn't want to tick off the people who are going to vote strictly on the basis of hating Trump. But he knows they can't win the House or the White House 
without an agenda that they can honestly support. And here's Mark Penn. This was uh, yesterday afternoon on Fox with Dana Perino. She said, how will Democrats push back against the tax that are coming from Republicans that they didn't support tax reform? Republicans will say are clearly benefiting the middle class. The Democrats opposed it. And she's exactly right. The Democrats cannot point to one of their own fingerprints on this. So here's a great pollster, history of uh, working with Hillary and the Clintons. What are they going to do? And here's the answer. In politics, once something's done, it's more off the table than on the table. So I think the best strategy for Democrats is, look, uh, we've got these tax cuts. They're in place. They in many ways constrain the ability to secure Medicare and Social Security. But what are we doing about health care, education, child care? Those are issues that you never hear Republicans talk about and that they can take straight to the middle class. Democrats win on, on their issues, issues that matter to real people. So he's, he's telling them, if you know what's good, for, stop bashing the tax cut. It's a loser. It's a good thing. You didn't support it, so forget it. It may as well not have happened. This is advice. He's telling you, your attitude is, it may as well not have happened. It's a non-starter. You didn't have anything to do with it, so don't continue to trash it. Talk about what you're known for, giving money to people. Get back to Santa Claus. Get back to health care. Mr. Penn, if I may, I mean, respectfully react here. They've already destroyed that, too. What do you mean, get back to health care? If there's something they think they've fixed, it's that, is it not? I mean, they're proud as they can be of Obamacare. So maybe what he means is they need to they need to keep attacking Republicans for trying to take away people's health care. But the idea that they fixed it, <laughs> don't make me laugh. It's an absolute mess. And then what's the other one? Uh, education. You know he's he's looking for the greatest hits here. The Democrats don't have anything. This is the bottom line. Here we are in the midst of an economic revival. And by the way, the Democrats' best friend right now is inflation. Because that might choke it off. That might slow down the growth. That might cause the Fed to raise interest rates, which is going to slow borrowing, which will theoretically slow the expansion of the economy. And it might bring back some pain. And the Democrats prosper when people are suffering. The Democrats, their party is made to exist when people are in suffering and pain. That's their natural state. That's where they... That's where they shine, by promising an end to the suffering. Of course, none of their policies ever bring about prosperity or the end to suffering. They just prolong the agony while making people think it's going to come to an end. But it never does until Republicans get in office and fix things, which is what's happening now. So go back to health care edu- and child care. Yeah, the old three-legged Democrats duel, health care, education. Child care. Boring. But to certain people, it matters. Government's going to help this. I, I think agenda wise, the Democrats don't have much. But look at they've got the last eight years of Obama. Who did all of this? And where are where did they get us? Where are we? Zilch zero nada. Trump hatred is what's going to continue to propel them. Here's here's more Schumer. This morning on the Senate floor talking about negotiations on a DACA bill. President Trump has stood in the way of a bipartisan solution to DACA, a problem he created in the first place. And yet the president is in this dream world. He thinks, oh, I can blame Democrats for the impasse. As I said, only in the 1984 world where up is down and black is white could this be true. Only in a 1984 world where up is down and black is white. Would the American public blame Democrats for this? You'd be surprised, Chuck, what the American people blame the Democrat Party for. I mean, it's a long list. And all it took to demonstrate this was somebody from outside the system named Donald Trump who convinced people that he really was going to fix their country and make it great again and protect it from people like you and others in your party. 
What this means, Trump is beating them on DACA. Schumer is in denial. Trump is beating them on taxes. They're in denial. Trump is beating them on everything. Now, I know you think, but Rush, but Rush, they're winning these local elections. Yeah, they're not. They're, these local elections got nothing to do with DACA. These local elections got nothing to do with, with, with federal Trump tax cuts. They, they, all politics is local. And I, I think one of the reasons the Democrats are winning these races is, I don't know. I'm not in any of these places where they're happening. I don't know if the Republican candidates are good or not. I don't know if the Republicans are even on the field. I don't know if they're overconfident. All I know is that George Soros and other sources are just pounding money into these races. And it it ought to be countered. Uh, here, here's, here's more. This is Schumer from the same speech on the Senate floor uh, talking about tax cuts. Listen, you, you tell me this isn't denial. You tell me that this isn't total ignorance. I mean, he's divorced from reality. Here. Republicans made a conscious decision to give corporations and the wealthiest Americans the lion's share of the tax cuts and promised it would trickle down to everyone else. Unfortunately, trickle down never works. And it's not what's happening now. Corporate America is doing what's best for corporate America. And work this is absurd. This is it's getting left behind. It goes to show you just who President Trump and Republicans were working for when they crafted this, their tax bill. Let me tell folks, this corporations is I'm sorry, Chuck, and the wealthiest Americans a I huge can't tell tax when cut finished or started. and Look, cut out everybody else. Is he finished yet? Thank you. This whole thing. Republicans made a conscious decision to give corporations and the wealthiest Americans the lion's share of the tax cuts. There's any number of ways to blow that to smithereens. 80% of the American people got a tax cut. How many Americans are now getting a raise at the new lowered tax rate and bonuses and expansion of benefits? And then this business, unfortunately, trickle down never works. They're, I'm telling you, they're tone deaf. They don't know what happened. And all they can do is try to characterize this the way they characterize the Reagan tax cuts. And what they're saying is that only the rich got the tax cuts. And the Republicans think that the rich having more money will trickle down to you having more money. But that's not how it works, Chuck Shue reminds us. Trickle down never works, and it's not what's happening now. This is not a trickle down tax cut. This is a direct targeted tax cut for 80% of the American people. Everybody got a tax cut. Trickle down is what the economy is. It's not a policy. Trickle down is not related to taxes. If you own a store and a customer comes in and buys something, that is trickle down. Somebody who had some money came into your store and bought something from you. The money from that person trickled down to you. It's called commerce. What the Democrats want you to think trickle down is, is the rich get all this money and then they'll share it or give it away or whatever. They'll see to it that you get some of it. Of course, that's not how life works. So the rich, they don't run around handing people money. They never do. And so the Democrats can always say the rich are never going to help anybody. Of course, which is crock. Because every time anybody spends money, it's trickling down or up or sideways through the economy. It's called commerce. These guys are stuck 30, 40 years ago trying to portray a tax cut the way they portrayed the Reagan tax cuts. And the Reagan tax cuts worked just as these are. But they spent eight years lying about the Reagan tax cuts. And it, they, they, they succeeded, even though people lived through the 80s and benefited from that economic boom in tax cuts. By the time 1992 hit, Bill Clinton was able to win the White House by telling people we were in the worst economy that we'd been in the last 50 years. So the Democrats are simply replaying what they think has worked in the past. They're going to portray this economy as the worst in the world come November. 
and certainly by 2020, and they're going to do it on the basis that the rich got most of the money and you didn't get any because the rich never trickled things down. But that's going to be up against reality. People are going to have much more disposable income. Their wages are going up. Their benefits packages are improving, and they're getting bonuses. And that's going to continue as well. This is why I say they're imploding. They're imploding. The Democrats are not winning these local elections. George Soros is. And I don't, I'm not trying to be cliched here. I'm trying to be as accurate as I can in telling you why this is happening. The Democrats, yeah, they're getting the votes, but that's not It's not that their ideas are triumphing. They're buying these elections with massive advertising and whatever else can be done with all this money that George Soros is pouring into these various elections. Take Soros out of the picture. And I'm telling you that the the dynamic changes greatly. They'd have to go out and find somebody else to give them the money because they're not raising any. The DNC is broke, folks. So it's not a contradiction in terms to say that the Democrats are winning in these local races and and they're imploding nationally. They are imploding nationally. Don't know what hit them yet. They still can't believe Trump is there. These people have been blinded with so much rage and hatred that that's all they know now. But by no means, don't misunderstand. I'm not saying we've won anything here. I'm just saying the opportunity to keep the momentum up is there. I mean, I'm the guy, among many others, who said this is about much more than just one election. And uh, and it is. I got to take a brief timeout. We'll be back and continue here before you know it. 